Very good morning. Jai Shri Krishna Guru. Thank you for joining Devi Mahatmya. Day 3 today. And wishing you all a very happy Navratri. Om Shri Guru Vyo Namaha Om Shri Ganeshaya Namaha Om Shri Saraswataya Namaha Om Shri Guru Dattatre Namaha Om Shri Mahalakshmi Namaha Guru Brahma Guru Vishnu Guru Devo Maheshwara Har Guru Sakshat Parabrahma Tasmai Shri Guru Ve Namaha Shri Devi Mahatmyam So we are doing the second episode and in that it is the fourth chapter which is Meditation on Mahalakshmi Wielding in her hands the string of beads, battle axe, mace, arrow, thunderbolt, lotus, bow, water pot, cut gel, lance, sword, shield, conch, bell, wine cup, trident, nose and the discus. Sudarshana, she has a complexion of coral and is seated on a lotus. I worship here that Mahalakshmi, the vanquisher of the Asura Mahisha. So yesterday we learnt about how the goddess fought the great demon Mahishasura. So today let us see what happens after that. But before that I will give a very small recap. So last two days we have learnt about the demons and who are they. The first two demons who came out from the wax of the Vishnu's ear. That was Madhu and Kaita. So what does Madhu represent? Just for your recap, Madhu are those who are very sweet talkers. Never get carried away by them. See, please remember, I'm not saying you should not believe people who speak sweetly. There is a very huge difference between what I'm saying here. There are a lot of very nice people, really good people who are genial with their speech. They're genuinely sweet. So you need to learn to understand the difference between who are genial and who are just sweet talkers to get their work done or they have some ulterior motives in them. So don't fall for such people, especially the sweet talkers in the world, you know, they'll praise you to heavens and then they know how to get their work done. The second is this Kaitaba. Kaitaba is who? The demon within us. He doesn't want to let us hear to our own inner voice, the divine voice, which is constantly telling, look, I am here and it is giving you the right guidance. You know, it's telling you do this, do that, don't do this. It's giving you the right, you know, guidance, but we don't listen to our inner voice. So be very careful of this Kaitaba. That is the demon who doesn't allow you to listen to anybody, especially your inner self. So, you know, go and kill this demon. So we have learnt how Lord Shri, um, uh, Lord Vishnu kills this demons. Okay. The next in the in yesterday's episode, we learnt about how the goddess is now born out of the you know all the gods the when they are praised you know when she is being praised when she is invoked the goddess is being born. She is you know the gods then give all their weapons to her so that she can kill this great demon. What does that represent? The goddess is being born. Please remember, this is an active and passive principle. The active principle is Shakti. It's represented by the word power or potencies or energy. So it is the Lord's potencies. It is the Lord's energy. So if you have listened to yesterday's you know, Devi Mahatmya Parayan, in that it is so beautifully mentioned that she is born from the, you know, big ball of effulgence from each of those gods, you know, like Vishnu, Maheshwar, and she becomes this beautiful form. And then every god, you know, gives his, the best weapon he has to her. And she is the power potency of the Lord, Shakti, the one who goes and fights the demon. So she is a doer. She's a fighter. So it is an active and a passive principle. So that is Purusha and Prakriti, Shiv and Shakti. So that is what we call her energy. So even if you take Lord Shri Krishna, he never does. He'll always say, my universe works for me. It is my Prakriti, it is my Prakriti who does. It is my mother. So she is the mother of this universe who is born and through her, she, you know, she has different manifestations, the power potencies 
who work who works for the divine lord the almighty lord and she is a doer she is a shakti the energy the power potency of the divine lord which is all within us we are the shakti we are the energy of the divine lord we can do anything we aspire to achieve in our world it just that we have to do you know like in bhagavad gita lord shri krishna says lift your bow and arrow and fight likewise even in in this devi mahatmyam it is all about the devi has to go fight the demons and the demons are not just outside it is first within us we have to conquer our own mind win our own self that is the most important thing so devi mahatmyam is to understand that i am this devi the greatness that exists within me because i have all the divine potencies the capabilities this you know the the weapons within me and how do i use that to serve my swadharma in following the path of dharma that is what it is very important every scripture only teaches this and now let us understand what the demons were and i am sure you learned how many demons she was fighting and in that a very important mention there was a mention the word called fatigue i'm just recapping this for you so that you understand you should not forget yourself you know you should not forget who you are yourself at any point in time and don't say i am tired you know i am i feel weak and all that stuff you should not say because you know after fighting so many you know huge armies of the asuras the demons the devi never was fatigued and on the contrary she said yeah yeah you come i will show i see how i will slay you and she uses different weapons to kill different rakshasas different demons please remember you can't use the same weapon to kill all sorts of demons what does that mean see within us we have different different demons some like madhu kaitaba or you know other uh, chikshura we we learned so many names you know yesterday yesterday's devi mahatmyam and uh, and in that it is mentioned that you have to use a different weapon to kill different demons likewise if you have a problem with waking up in the morning you have to use a different weapon which is about you know keeping the alarm ensuring that you you put all your energy and force to wake yourself up see disciplining is a very important aspect so how do you attain all of this so you have to use the different capabilities that is which means it's a different weapons that you have to use and finally what happens the mahishasur gets very angry when he sees that devi ma is destroying you know she's literally killing all the asura she's already slain everybody she has vanquished all them all of them okay so he gets very angry now he takes a buffalo form so who is this buffalo inertia and lethargy the word itself says right mahisha mahisha means buffalo what is buffalo represent within us which is lazy lethargy inertia filled with inertia we don't want to do anything we just want to sit there lay around and not do even not even lift our finger we want everything today you know in the world of automation we are so given into this tamasic tendencies so what do we do we sit in our you know we sit in our place we operate every everything through a remote control our life itself has become automatic you know everything we want it automatic we don't want to move even if you take fan you know those days we would get up to turn on the switch to turn on whether it is light or fan or anything today everything is smart home you know you just take a phone and you use your phone to power on everything so that is how kaliva tamasic tendencies have become predominant in, our, in within us so the next thing what happens the tamas then he becomes a lion and what does lion mean so when they, when someone points out to you what is this you're lazing all around you're not doing a single work you're just becoming a lazy bone get up and do something we get angry and then what do we do we say you know what i know i've all done this you don't come and tell me i've already achieved all of this in my life so that comes you know that is an ego which talks you don't say things to me i already know i have done this you don't teach me this is how we behave and what does it mean it's it's a attitude it's about oh it's it's an ego it's kind of saying oh i have i know everything so then then comes another attitude the moment you 
somebody keeps telling you you get very angry then again the the asura is born it takes a form again of a the demon which is in the human form he comes back from the lion he becomes that human and then what does it mean he gets very infuriated and every time you tell him again he says don't tell me he gets infuriated very much angry and then he says you don't come and teach me and you don't tell me to do this i have done this in my past i have achieved so that is going back to again the man form so don't fall for these things this is what happens to us and the last is he again gets back into no not before the um, after the man form he comes back again as what elephant form the demon becomes like an elephant what does elephant represent it's pride arrogance you know don't you know i am the mighty one i know it all i am the greatest one in this world so that is an inflated ego sort of see arrogance haughtiness pride which is not good again that is detrimental whether it is in the material world or spiritual or in your personal world it is never going to allow you to do anything in your life you will always either live in the past glories or you would live thinking that you have you know thinking no end of yourself thinking that you have done everything and once again when you are given a peace of mind or told you know what is this kind of haughtiness you have pride and arrogance look at you you know when you say all of that again we go back in that buffalo form which again means i have an apathetic attitude i sort of self pity which is all tamasic tendencies by the way then i'm going to sit and do nothing i'm going to become a martyr in my life so this is the demons which are going to keep taking that form but also this is a very important thing i taught you yesterday is in devi mahatmyam which is about it says mahishasur you know took the throne of indradev so what does it mean the mahis the ta- the inertia the lethargy the tamasic tendencies it's become the king so when it oh it's become the king that is king of uh, the heavens which is the it's taken the place of indradev what does it mean so we are in the control of the tamas tamasic tendencies within us so it is never going to allow us to either do whether it is at home or outside it's never going to allow us to you know do our job it's always going to keep us keep us in that loop continuously why because we have succumbed to that so you need to use all the potentials that you have to kill these demons within you and rising about please remember these demon have immortality because their guru is shukracharya who has who, who can revive these demons when they die he can bring them back to life again so they have an immortality they don't actually die that is the reason why you will see that some days you will say okay i have overcome this in my life and if you even utter or even think something strange happens in the within the next few days it could be few hours you will end up doing what you have thought that you have been able to overcome that is what these demons do which mean they'll tell you look i am not i am not dead i am very much alive and they'll wake up and then they will wake up and then destroy that thing that you have been able to overcome whether it is being lazy or lethargy whatever that you think you have achieved they will come to destroy that is the job of these demons so you have to fight fiercely you have to use all the ability potentials to you know and then destroy these demons within you first once you conquer within you once you are victorious within yourself then you can achieve anything in this world and there is no stopping for you so that is a quick recap of what i taught yesterday from devi mahatmyam parayan that is episode 2 chapter 2 and 3 so now we will continue with fourth chapter the sage said when the most valiant and wicked asura and the army of the enemies of gods were slain by the goddess the host of gods headed by indra lorded her their necks and shoulders bowed in salutation and their bodies charming with horripilations of delight All this world has been pervaded by the goddess through her soul free sorry soul force which has embodied itself in the form of the joint forces of the entire hosts of gods to her the mother worthy of worship by all the gods and seers we bow in devotion may she arrange for us auspicious things the infinite lord brahma and shiva cannot adequately describe her unparalleled glory 
May she, Chandika, be pleased to give thought to the protection of the entire world and to the destruction of the fear of evil, fear of evil. See, most important, we don't have to fear anything and we are capable of winning anything in our world. So there is nothing to be fearful of. And especially the evil, when the great goddess is there, when you are the divine being, when her protection is there with you, why fear any evil? So don't ever fear anything in this world and you're capable of fighting any battles, whether it is within or outside you. Thou art prosperity and beauty in the man mansions of those who perform good deeds, poverty and ugliness in the case of those disposed towards evil, intelligence in the heart of those who possess a cultivated mind, what is very important and where does she live, intelligence in the heart of those who possess a cultivated mind, faith in the good folk and modesty in those born in a noble family. We bow down to thee, O Devi, protect the universe. So the gods are now praising and lauding her. O Devi, how can we describe thy form? It cannot be grasped by the mind. And how to extol thy excessive valor, playing havoc amongst the Asuras, and those exploits of thine in battles, surpassing all those of the divine and the Asuri course. Thou art the cause of all the worlds. Thou art made up of the three gunas, yet a stranger to their attendant effects. Thou art beyond the ken or ken of perception of even Vishnu, Shiva and others. Refuge of all art thou. This world, this whole world is a portion of thine. Yeah, thou art the primordial, unmanifest, supreme Prakriti. O Devi, thou art Swaha, by uttering which all the goddess, godheads get satisfaction in all the sacrifices. Thou art also the cause of satisfaction to the Pitris. That is why thou art called Swadha as well by people. O Devi, thou art supreme knowledge, the cause of liberation. Thou, Bhagavati, constituting great unthinkable austerities, are practiced by sages who reject all their shortcomings, keep their senses well under restraint, know the essence of truth and seek liberation. Soul of sound, treasure trove of immaculate rick, ejus and salmon, whose arrangement of words is beautiful with the resonance of Omkara. Thou, Bhagavati, art the three Vedas. O Devi, thou who destroyest the great distress of all the worlds, are the common speech for carrying on in the workday world. O Devi, thou art verily Gauri, established by the moon-crested Shiva, Lakshmi, who has taken a boat solely in the heart of Vishnu, the enemy of Kaitava, Saraswati, the intellect, knowing the essence of all Shastras, Durga, seated unattached, the boat for crossing the unfordable sea of existence. How beautiful it is. See, that this Devi is the grace you have to seek. And when you seek her, she gives and she bestows everything, that which you can't even imagine. And in this case, Durga seated unattached, the boat for crossing the unfordable sea of existence. Smiling and pure, resembling the orb of a full moon, glowing like pure shining gold, was thy face. Yet, it is very strange that on seeing it, Mahishasura became furious and struck it with violence. O oh Devi, even more strange was the fact that Mahishasura did not breathe his last immediately. His, sorry, his last immediately. He saw thy angry face, terrible with eyes bros, knit and crimson, like the rising moon, who breathes after beholding the enraged Lord of Death. Devi, thou art supreme. Be gracious for the existence here. Enraged, thou destroyest forthwith the families. We have known this now, that the huge army of Mahishasura has been vanquished. To whomsoever thou art gracious, thou even grant, grantest them prosperity. They are well esteemed in the countries 
Theirs is the wealth, theirs the fame, and their pursuit of dharma perish not. They are the fortunate ones who have devoted children, servants, and wives. Devi, by thy grace, the doer of good acts, does daily with great faith all the deeds conducive to dharma, and always doing so reaches heaven. O Devi, art thou not therefore the giver of the fruit in all the three worlds? When thou art remembered in a crisis, thou removes the fear of all beings. When remembered by those stationed in themselves, thou grantest them the most auspicious thought. O dispeller of poverty, suffering, and fear, who else except thee has an ever compassionate heart to render her sorry to render help to everybody? How beautiful. See, the Devi doesn't differentiate between anyone. One most important characteristics of the Devi is what you need to understand. Whenever Devi is angry or she's she's upset, it's not upset, she's angry, you know, she's destroying these demons. You know, in all of this, she's very compassionate because all these demons are attaining her. Do you even see that? Because when the Devi is killing the demon, isn't the demon getting liberation is getting liberated and she is the one who is killing him. Imagine how blessed these demons are to be. You need to always think this. Something very strange, isn't it? All of those who are getting killed are still attaining the Divine Lord. That is the beauty and that is why we call all of this the play. It's a Leela. There is nothing good and bad. It's just an illusion. It's only, you know, we are born to experience and attain liberation more than liberation, I would say it's God-realization. That is why we have this human birth. And most important is to one is to the higher purpose, highest purpose is to attain God-realization. And second most important thing is to do your Swadharma, which is serving your purpose of being born as this human being by following the path of righteousness. But what does this Asuras and everything represent? They are following the path of unrighteousness. And that is why Devi is very benevolent. She redeems them actually by destroying and killing them. The evil propensities, which means we human beings have both the divine and the demonic nature within us. So the, to become the divine, you have to destroy the demonic tendencies and propensity that exists within us with the grace of this divine and through the great knowledge. So knowledge is there to cut asunder the ignorance. That is what the real knowledge is all about. So we have to use this knowledge to destroy and dispel the darkness of our ignorance within us and become that effulgent being. That is all it means about Devi Mahatmya. This is a spiritual way of understanding. The other aspect, how it applies in the material world, in the in the day-to-day -day -day existence is that, that you have all these capabilities. So you can be a good human being, a good person okay to wherever you are right to your family to your children to your the society around and you can serve the purpose of the divine by being a sattvic person means your good self having the all the divine endowments within you so which which means you're walking the path of righteousness you're only on the path of dharma that is what it means where you're not going to you know, become negative, you're not going to become hatred, hateful to someone, somebody around. You're not going to live in your past, you're not going to do all of that. That is what means being your good self and you will do whatever that which you have to do, your duties to the highest of your abilities. You will do everything in a clockwork precision. But for you to achieve that, you have to first go through this. You know, overcome all the demons that exist in your world and empower the Devi within you who is so great, who is so powerful. You are the Devi. There is no Devi outside of you. Understand, you are the Devi and realize your hidden potentials and become the most beautiful goddess. That is what is Devi Mahatmyam. Let the world know how great you are. Let the world understand the greatness of who you are. That is what you have to achieve. So let us quickly continue. If these are slain, the world will attain happiness. Let them be committing sins for a long stay in hell. But they can go to heaven by meeting their death in battle. See, that's exactly what I was teaching you now. O Devi, thinking thus, thou hast slain the enemies. 
this is certain so the devi is very compassionate even when she is angry and killing she is actually redeeming them why the why does sorry why does thou not reduce all the asuras to ashes by a look the fact that thou employs to weapons to fight the foes in order that even those enemies purified by weapons may attain higher worlds shows the kind thought thou has towards these those unkind ones how beautiful the divine being is very very gracious very compassionate benevolent we can never fathom the greatness of this divine mother any divinity for that matter they are the ultimate compassionate beings and they come and shower they bestow upon everybody whether somebody is a foe whether somebody is you know uh, you know friend it doesn't matter everyone is equal to them their grace is on everybody they don't differentiate between anyone but please remember they will always be on the path on the path of dharma and on the on the side of the truth that is where they will stand the eyes of the asuras have not been put out by the fierce lightning flashes of shining swords and the mass of light emerging from the points of the trident this is so because they were seeing thy face adorned with a crescent moon emitting cool rays o devi thy thy nature is to subdue the deeds of the wicked what is, what is her nature is to subdue the deeds of the wicked and who's the wicked the, te- the demonic tendencies within us so what does she does she subdues them likewise this thy form cannot be grasped by thought and has no parallel with other things and thy wailer destroys those who take away the god's promise thus mercy has been exhibited even to the enemies by the how beautiful mercy she is merciful being even to the enemies she has exhibited her mercy that is why she is great that is why she is the devi what can be the comparison to this to this thy prowess and where one can find a form like thine very captivating and at the same time striking fear in the enemies oh devi giver of the best in all the triple world only in the have been seen compassion in the heart and harshness in the battle the entire this is very beautiful compassion in the heart and harshness in the battle that is who she is she is very compassionate you know lord shri krishna has taught something very beautifully he always even to the enemy he is very compassionate and he is he redeems them by killing them compassionately with love alone but exhibiting harshness in the battle that's how it is but the lord himself is not going to do in lord shri krishna's case it is the universe which works for him because he is the ultimate the entire triple world has been saved by the by the destruction of foes and the hosts of foes have been led to heaven by being killed in the battle front see they've been led to heaven our fear rising out of the haughty asuras has been dispelled salutations to thee o devi guard us with spear mother guard us with the sword with the ring of the bell guard us and with the twang of the bow string protect us in the east in the west chandika protect us in the south ishwari likewise in the north whirling the thy spear whatever are thy auspicious forms and whatever thy terrible forms that move about in the triple world with them protect us and the earth as well mother protect us from everything with whatever weapons thy tender hand contacts the sword the trident the mace and the like the sage said thus the upholder and sustainer of the worlds was lauded by the gods and worshiped with flowers produced in garden nandana and with fragrant sandal paste oh my god it's a very secret been revealed right now worshiped with flowers produced in the garden nandana nidhi one we say you know the holy the basil holy basil forest nandana and with fragrant sandal paste who is she actually she is lord shri krishna herself the lord is it is krishna kali okay so here the secret is the fragrant sandal paste who is actually worshiped with fragrant sandal paste it is lord shri krishna that is the truth see these are all godaises okay that is what we have to understand please remember this body has no knowledge the words are of his divine wisdom alone 
everything that comes from my mouth is the words of the divine wisdom i have not opened after last years parayan i am just opening here whatever is coming from my mouth is coming from where the, the divine lord himself so that is the truth which is being revealed i hope you understand this truth she was offered with devotion by all the gods the divine incense gracious and benign in countenance and she spoke to all gods bowing in salutations the goddess said let the gods choose whatever they desire from me the god said thy eminence has done everything nothing is left to be done as our in enemy mahishasura has been killed great goddess if a boon has to be conferred on us by thee whenever we think of thee destroy our great sufferings mother of immaculate face whosoever is the mortal who praises thee with these lords may thou who are gracious to us be so to him for the plenitude of knowledge growth glory along with opulence in wealth and household comforts like wife etc o king the sage said o king thus propitiated by the gods for the sake of the world and for their own sake bhadrakali said yes and vanished o protector of the earth so far has been said how the goddess desiring the wheel of the three worlds was born long ago from the bodies of the gods again how as a helper of the gods she manifested out of gauri's body for the protection of the world and for the destroy of wicked asuras as well as shumba and nishumba i shall relate listen to it i shall tell as it happened rim o here ends the fourth of devi mahatmya in markandeya purana during the period of savarni the manu that is a very powerful lesson i hope you understood today who this great devi is she is krishna kali she is krishna herself there is not nobody outside of him please understand the truth is krishna is the ultimate he is the supreme divine consciousness he is the father in the heaven he is the ultimate the supreme personality of godhead from him emanates everybody else so he himself manifests and it is said it is the lord's power potencies the ma the shakti is the power potency of lord himself and it is him alone so with that i think we've learned a very beautiful lesson today so here we end this and next we'll continue tomorrow which is day 4 wishing you all once again a very happy navratri thank you for joining devi mahatmya paraye om shri maha ganapate namaha om shri gurudev datta om shri sachidananda satguru sainath maharaj ki jai om namo bhagavate vasudevaya digambara digambara shri pad vallava digambara om shri krishna guru nath nath shri gurave namaha om devi durgaaya namaha om shri krishna arpanam namastu krishnam vande jagat guru